All right, friends, this is it. Today I want to show you a nice little trick which will help making your own onboard videos look a lot faster and your GoPro videos in general will look a lot better or let's say more cinematic. So this trick, well, first of all, it not really is a trick, actually is a completely common and well-known practice in the media and film business. And it's called using an ND filter. Wait until we get into the sun so you can see better here. This black thing here in front of my GoPro's lens, that's a so-called ND filter. ND stands for neutral density. And what this filter does, well, actually it doesn't do a whole lot, but the effect it has on your camera is quite dramatic. Because this filter... That was a friend of mine. Actually, this small filter will make your camera think that the world suddenly has become a much darker place. Well, it kind of did. Uh, not all of a sudden. Actually, I have no idea where I left and where I started. I think I have to start all over again. I think I was about to turn into a motorcycling philosopher. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Um, that wasn't my intention. I have to admit, I would like to become something like this. But <laughs> That's another story. So this neutral density filter, it simply blocks quite a bit of the light, which normally would get through to your camera sensor. So in this case, your camera simply thinks that there isn't too much light available and therefore it will automatically use longer shutter speeds. Actually, I don't have any intention to explain how this whole magic of moving images and video works. But a very brief explanation. Let's say you're filming in 1080p25. I'm all about the number of 25 here. 25 means that we are shooting 25 images per second. 25 single frames. Whenever a camera is filming or recording, it's actually doing nothing different than a normal photo camera, except for that it doesn't just take one picture. In this case, it takes 25 pictures in one second. And if you arrange those 25 pictures within this one second, you will make our brain think that we are watching a movie sequence. In very short words, that's basically how film works. But I'm not here to, to explain this I'm here to talk about the advantages of using a neutral density filter and not how the filming itself works as I said our small cameras are actually taking single frames now when you got your hands on a somewhat professional film camera well actually it doesn't need to be this professional most cameras are able to do so you can decide yourself which shutter speed you would like to use for those 25 single images which are shot in movie mode unfortunately I can't tell my my GoPro to use longer shutter speeds. I can't tell my GoPro anything basically and that's why we are using this neutral density filter. So this filter simply forces your GoPro to use much longer exposure times on those 25 single frames. So this has the nice side effect that all of the green bits you're seeing here which are flying past the, the camera on the left and right side. Right now I'm using no ND filter by the way. So everything that is flying past your camera will be captured with heavier motion blur. As I said in the beginning, in the professional film world, it's the most common thing to do. So in bright sunny conditions like this, your camera actually wouldn't be able to use those nice and long exposure times because there would be way too much light hitting your camera sensor and the whole image simply would like blow out. You would see nothing but white. So, for instance, whenever I'm using my DSLR camera to film something, I actually never want to go above a shutter speed greater than one hundredth of a second. I always use 150 or 1100 actually. Because in a professional film world, you always want to have this nice and smooth motion blur instead of perfectly sharp images. So, um, whenever your camera is not using this longer shutter speed so for instance the gopro right now i'm sure it's using quite short shutter speeds because i'm not using this nd filter you will end up with video images which simply do not look like <laughs> well how should i say professional 
And by the way, that's actually one of the biggest, um, well, secrets of the GoPro guys. Usually they will always use neutral density filters on their GoPros because that's how they get this effect, uh, which brings people to write comments like, whenever I'm using my GoPro, I'm using the exact same settings. I know I'm using the right render settings, but still, my images don't look like the ones that the GoPro guys put on their YouTube channel. Uh, a big reason for why their images look so good and smooth is because they are always using ND filters and therefore force their GoPros to use longer shutter speeds. Actually, I'm used to using ND filters all the time, so please don't even ask why I never thought of using ND filters on the GoPro. But just a couple of weeks ago, the Motobastards uploaded a wonderful raw onboard video showing uh, an R1M, I think, I think it was an R1M, um, going up a Swiss mountain pass. And at first they even managed to trick me. And I was sitting there thinking like, whoa, what the hell, how can he ride this fast? I mean, by now I know that I'm not the slowest rider myself, but watching this video I was like, what the fuck, man, that's insanely quick. Until I realized he was using a neutral density filter. I'm not bad mouthing that raw video, by the way. That still is... Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's one of the best raws I've ever seen on YouTube. And obviously you shouldn't use an ND filter to make your riding look quicker. But you simply should use it to make your footage look more professional, actually. But you know, at least their video finally inspired me to test out the ND filter in video mode myself because obviously for my pictures, my GoPro photographs, I've been using ND filters for I think more than two years now. I said it before, please don't even ask. But thanks to you, motor bastards, thank you very much. I also tried it out in video mode. The most important bit maybe was that only the Moto Bastards video made me realize that almost nobody else on YouTube knew about using ND filters while filming. Since often I get accused of speeding up my onboard rides in post-production. Um, <laughs> I swear to Jeebus, I swear to Jeebus, if any of you uh, had told me like five or six years ago that people actually are going to accuse me of speeding up my onboard ride <laughs> afterwards in, in post-production. Um, I probably would have said something like, yeah, that sounds, sounds, like, sounds like desirable riding skills to have, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, here I am. But this actually made me realize that there is a way to make your onboard rides look faster. And yeah, this is why I'm making this video right now. I want to share with you guys. Your whole footage, the, the GoPro footage, simply looks a lot more professional, a lot more stylish. Yeah, well, a lot cooler, if you want to call it that. And I, I mean, not like, not white balance wise, not uh, color temperature wise. I mean like cool in a way like, yeah, that's, that's cool, man. And all of that simply because you are forcing your GoPro to use longer shutter speeds. If you have a couple of euros to spare, just buy whatever ND filter you want and test it out for yourself. Because I can guarantee you that you will be very surprised. So right now I'm going to record a couple of quick onboard rides with ND filter, without ND filter, using 50 frames, using 25 frames, so that you guys can see the differences for yourself. Oh, and yeah, of course, please tell me which way of recording is or was your own favorite, because I haven't decided for myself how I will capture my future onboard videos. And since, of course, you are going to ask which filter I'm using, um, right now, I'm using this model here. It's from Polar Pro and I cannot recommend it because at, at least with this option you get sometimes rather bad like vignetting in the corners and also the 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 coating i think the word is coating or, or, or coating sometimes whenever i'm cleaning the lens i get some some strange kind of smear going on and I actually think that this is because this outer ring here is, yeah, kind of, well, it's slowly disappearing whenever my cloth is picking some of this 
from the outside up it starts smearing the whole lens so that's a design flaw if you ask me and so in the future i will use something different i will use this thing here um where is it this is yeah basically it's an adapter which you just pop onto your GoPro. This one here is for 52 millimeter filters. With this adapter you can use filters which were designed for DSLR cameras. I, I have no proof to say this, but I'm still claiming this. Um, I think even the cheapest DSLR filters probably will lead to better results than this one here. Yeah, so with this I will be able to use any 52 millimeter filter element I desire. And I'm pretty sure that at least these smearing issues, whenever I'm touching the frame of the filter element, with proper filters these problems will be gone. So I actually recommend you guys to get a cheap um, GoPro to 52 or 55 millimeter filter adapter so that you can use proper DSLR camera filters and not this yeah, piece of plastic. But mind you, I've been using this for my GoPro photographs for the last one or two years and for those it always worked well enough.